What is up guys, it is the Sound Alchemist, and welcome back to another Warhammer 40k video. Today I am going to be talking about a mashup. A mashup between Warhammer 40k Primark Edition and that of Pokemon. At first glance, you would think that these two things are in a completely different genre. And they are. <laughs> There's no denying that. Pokemon is pretty much kind of centered towards like kids with like video games and trading cards and all that stuff. And 40k seems to be more... Well, I guess nowadays it's, it's kind of being... I guess with Warhammer Adventures targeted at kids. But more so it's for that young adult that uh, enjoys wargaming. However, the reason why I'm talking about Pokemon and Warhammer 40k is because lately I got back into playing Pokemon Go. And with the release of Pokemon Sword and Shield coming out, I'm kind of getting back into the Pokemon craze, and I've been re-watching a few episodes in the anime. But that's neither here nor there. The main <laughs> emphasis on this video is to compare Pokemon to the Primarchs of 40k. This video will be focusing on the Renegade Primarchs, the Primarchs that no longer see the Emperor as their light and they have turned to chaos. So pretty much I'm going to go through each uh, Renegade Primarch and talk about which Pokemon best embodies them, whether it be through what they look like or how they act. And beginning with Angron. So as we all know, Angron is the Raid Angel, the gladiator of death, and this Primarch has been, depending on how you look at it, either blessed with the Butcher's Nails or cursed with them. Blessed because that's really uh, enticing him to be Cornet in all of his ways, and now that he's a Corn Demon Prince, then yeah. It's all, <laughs> it's all good for him, especially with those butcher's nails making him way more aggressive. And thinking into the Pokemon that could best embody him, there's a lot that come to mind. For example, you have Hydreigon, which is a pseudo-legendary dragon-type Pokemon that literally just goes on a rampage and doesn't stop attacking until anything that moves is not moving. This dragon really really fits the cake when it comes to Angron. However, that's not my choice. I'm actually going to say Primeape. Yes, I'm going with Primeape. And why, you might ask? Well, nostalgia plays a little bit in here. Because uh, I remember watching the old school anime and Ash... Um, he caught a primate. <laughs> this primate was, he's always looking for a fight, and I believe in this Pokédex entry it says that primate will not rest until he beats up whoever has angered him. And uh, going back to that Pokémon episode, primate wanted Ash's hat, and <laughs> for a long, long time they just kept going back and forth. And Ash was trying to get his hat back, primate wouldn't let him, they got into a little bit of a tussle. But anyway, I think that's the Pokemon that would best embody Angron. Again guys, if you guys think I am wrong, if you think there's a better choice, um, let me know down in the comments below. But anyway, let's move on to the second Primark, or Primarchs for that matter, and that is the Primark of the Alpha Legion, Alpharius, and Omegon. So this Primark is a very particular one. There's a lot of mystery surrounding him or both of them for that matter, because in some instances Alpharius has a twin brother and their origin is unknown and he is very easily able to switch between other members of his ranks. So because of that, it's a very sneaky type of character. So with that being said, you can say that, oh, Alpharius has to be a sneaky Pokemon. However, I went with a different route. Um, it kind of following the same thing with sneakiness. The symbol for the Alpha Legion is that of the Hydra. There's many heads in the Hydra, and because of that, you don't know exactly who's who. So what Pokemon looks the most like a Hydra? I've already mentioned it. It's Hydreigon. So again, this is a three-headed pseudo-legendary dragonoid, and 
uh, same thing that I said before, it's very temperamental, it likes to fight, it won't stop attacking until the fight is over and he's the victor, and that's kind of how Space Marines, um, their whole battle uh, type of tactics is just attack methodically until the enemy is not a threat, and that means till death. So that's why I think that Alpharius is best represented with Hydragon. Moving on to the next, we have Mortarian. This one I thought was pretty easy, however, I couldn't pick between these two Pokemon. So before we get into the Pokemon, Mortarian has been a very interesting Primark. He hates himself for the fact that he is a Psyker, but he always hated psychic powers and psychic abilities. However, he was also blessed by Nurgle. All things putrid, rotting kind of stuff, they all encompass him. So, with that in mind, I thought which Pokemon would fit the bill for Mortarian? And two really came to mind. That would be Garbodor, which is literally a garbage Pokemon, and the other one is Muck, this toxic slime. Um, they're both pretty hardy Pokemon defensively, which that's all what Nurgle is about. Pretty much just keeping the battle going. If attacks hit you, they don't really do too much effect. And that was encompassed in the battle between Muck and Bellsprout. Um, Bellsprout was whooping Ash's Pokemon left and right, and then came Muck, and he kind of just body slammed his way to victory, which uh, Mortarian has seen victory after victory, especially fighting in those wars as long as uh, Mortarian is on top. He's pretty happy there, although he hates himself. So I figured Mortarian's Pokemon would be either a Muck or a Garbodor. Let me know which one you'd want to go with in the comments below. But we move on to the next Pokemon, or the next Primark for that matter, and that is Magnus the Red, the second strongest Psyker in the Imperium after the Emperor. So Magnus the Red is all about psychic powers. He has a little bit of like almost Egyptian um, symbolism to him with his thousand sons, more so in the 30k era than that of 40k. So keeping the psychic nature in mind, keeping that little bit of like Egyptian symbolism into it, I decided to go with a very obscure Pokemon that I don't hear much about, and that is Sigilyph. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. Right. So Sigilyph is a psychic type Pokemon, which Psychic, Magnus being a Psyker, works perfectly good, and he is also a flying type, which embodies what Magnus has become after being a demon prince of Zeech. He has sprouted wings and he's now able to fly, which he probably could have done with psychic powers anyway, but Sigilyph kind of fits the whole look of Magnus pretty well, or so I think. The next one was an interesting choice. So I'm talking about Perturabo, the Primarch of the Iron Warriors. This guy created the armor that he's wearing, and it resembles that of a tank, at least in my opinion. It's very bulky, um, he has like arm cannons, and it's stated that he was strong enough to even support a stomp from a titan, which is no laughing matter. So I thought, what type of tanky Pokemon would fit the bill when it comes to Perturabo. And I went with Mega Blastoise. So Mega Blastoise also has cannons on his arms, and you've got his turtle shell, which kind of fits the bill for being Terminator armor. So I thought these two would be a pretty good fit. And that's pretty much all that they really have in common. Uh, Perturabo is kind of said to be pretty ugly looking, but Blastoise is a cutie in my opinion, <laughs> so they differ there, but I think the whole Terminator armor fits that of Mega Blastoise's carapace. Moving on, we have Conrad Kurz, the Dark Knight of the Renegade, the Chaos Primarchs. A lot of the thing with him, especially with that of the Night Lords, is all about terror, kind of shock value, and um, bats for some reason um, all the helmets on his legion have like the bat wings a lot of their insignias and symbols have to do with bats so I looked up all the bat like Pokemon 
and there is quite a few to my surprise. You got your Zubats, your Golbats, um, you got the new ones which are like the Noivern, which is a dragon bat kind of thing. However, I went with Gliscor. Gliscor looks the most, uh, I guess, besides the dragon bat, <laughs> it looks the most intimidating. And uh, I don't know, I just decided to go with Gliscor. He, he seems to encompass the, uh, the Dark Knight nature, if you will, of the Primarch here. But again, if you think I should have gone with Noivern, uh, let me know why in the comments below. But for now, let's continue onwards. For these next two Primarchs, I literally had no clue. So let's begin with Fulgrim. Fulgrim is very much so entwined with perfection, attaining to be the perfect form, trying to become the best you you can be, and he's pretty. <laughs> so the only Pokemon that came to mind when I think of pretty is Gardevoir. I mean, just look at her in her beautiful opulence. Um, yeah, I literally have no idea, so help me out in the comments, guys. Who should I have picked for Fulgrim? And the next one is that of Lorgar. Lorgar was the runt of the litter, so to speak. Everybody kind of picked on him. He always seemed to be needing another Primarch to lift him to greatness up until near the end of the Horus Heresy. So I thought, what Pokemon is always getting picked on? What Pokemon is everybody forgetting about? And what Pokemon would be considered the runt of the, what, like 700 plus Pokemon that have been released? And my answer is Dunsparce. Look at him, he's so pathetic looking. He's supposed to be like a worm or something like that, but he's got wings. And even though he's got wings, he can barely even fly. Like, what a loser. And that's why Lorgar is equal to Dunsparce. And now we come to the final Primarch, and that is Horus. Horus Lupercal, the man that started the heresy. This Primarch is as, I guess, intimidating as he is charismatic. He was the war master, so of course he's able to lead a vast number of people with his charisma, his intellect, and his skills. So you know that this guy is one of the more intimidating Primarchs to encounter in battle. Unfortunately, the Chaos Gods corrupted his mind and he became a very powerful instrument of chaos, almost killing the Emperor, almost besieging the Imperium into a slow, painful death. And the Pokemon that I think encompasses him, both as a loyalist and a traitor Primarch, is that of Lycanroc. Lycanroc is a wolf, kinda? And Horus was the Primarch of the Luna Wolves. Lycanroc is also known to be pretty loyal, pretty powerful, and overall a great companion to its trainer. And that's pretty much what Horus was to the Emperor. He was his favorite and his most powerful general in his armies, and these two are a perfect match. And of course, that's the Lycanroc. Um, that you see here, but Lycanroc also has another form, a more sinister form, a form that he becomes more prone to darkness and mischief, and that is where you kind of see the sun and the moon aspect between the two Pokemon, the light and the dark, and that is why Lycanroc is the perfect, the perfect Pokemon to Horus change my mind guys and with that being said those were the pokemon that i thought encompass that of the renegade the traitor the chaotic primarchs if you guys enjoyed this little thing that i came up with uh, let me know down in the comments let me know what you thought about my choices if you have anything better and of course hit that like button if you want me to do a part two where i go over the pokemon that best fit in with the Loyalist Primarchs. That being Gilliman, Sanguinius, Vulcan, Corvus, Corax, Lionel, Johnson, Rogodorn, Jack Tycon, Ferris Manus, Lehman Russ, and I will do that as soon as I can. 
So again, guys, let me know what you thought about this video down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more things 40k. And of course, we do have a giveaway going out right now. Check out the video as to how the Trader Primarchs ascended into demonhood. It's like a 50 minute video, so make sure you bring snacks and you stay till the end so you can find out how the Chaotic Primarchs became chaotic. And of course, you guys have a chance to win an awesome giveaway. So check that out, and don't forget that we post 40k videos each and every day. This has been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.